Okay, so the problem, <clears throat> one of the problems in living off the earth is um, basically how do you make a house? And you obviously take tools to make the house, but it'd be more efficient to take tools to make the tools to make the house. And how small can those initial tools be? Uh, we computed uh, that they'd be the size of a few semi-trailers, and I want to get that size down. Okay, um, for, building, for building habitats, we had the concept of taking an inflatable structure, inflating it, and building a habitat inside it. This might be wound fiberglass. But, 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 but what do you do for the tools? You know, you know, so here's, here's a comparable solution for the big items. What about all the little furnishings inside? And um, for at least uh, 20 years, I'd say, there have been rapid prototyping, 3D printers, things like that. Uh, the price started at fifty to $100,000 for the equipment, and they were about the size of, say, this black table up here. Um, the price has come down to $15,000, and on the left is a, um, th that might be the housing, the case of a handheld drill that you might use as a tool. You can imagine all kinds of other tools and household appliances, but um, uh, uh, that's, that's one that I happen to be able to take a photograph of. Okay, just in the past uh, year or so, um, there was a 20 to 1 price reduction in that machine. So suddenly, practically anybody who bought an airline ticket to come here can afford to have your own little 3D printer. Um, and by the way, um, that's Patrick Callahan. I recruited him from uh, in Chicago to demo his little uh, 3D printer, and we tried to convert him to be a, a space enthusiast, and he tried to convert us to 3D printing. But we both had a lot of fun. He, he spent the entire four days at ISDC because he loved it so much. And he, he didn't even know about it till till I got hold of him through a user group. Um, oh, by the way, these, um, uh, this particular brand is made by a company called MakerBot, started by three people in, um, in New York City. Um, it, it is not the best quality machine. It doesn't produce the best parts, and it's kind of finicky. But, um, you know, the industry is on its way to this dramatic price reduction. Oh, uh, $750 to buy a kit to make that machine that will make almost any part that's in these boxes. Okay, so I think uh, the people in this room and others throughout the world should start a team and start designing 3D parts that you might use on the moon or Mars. Um, those people, or, or find parts, find CAD designs for parts. Um, and those people who want to own their own machine can print them and Let's publicize this ability and show off the parts, take them out to, to show to kids and um, other um, you know, uh, public events, and I think it'd be a lot of fun for, for everybody. Okay, I will first talk about um, the, the raw materials and the feedstock. Um, I, don't, it, um, I don't recommend these little 3D printers for things that are easier to make it in other ways. Um, if you want to make this table, for example, you might have a machine that makes sheets of plastic and then you cut the plastic sheets and just glue them together or screw them together. It, you, you wouldn't use a custom 3D printer to print the entire table uh, l bit by bit. Um, so, so I propose that we'd have um, the, the equipment to manufacture plastic and also plastic sheet and then uh, laser cutters and water jet cutters to, uh, to cut them. So, so I'm, I'm kind of rolling these together. You, you, you wouldn't always use a 3D printer. Um, I've borrowed these slides from, mostly from Frank Crossman and Damon, who um, took part in the uh, hillside study a few years ago. Um, there are ways to, uh, to, to make continuous rolls of steel that could then be a raw material for this. You can slit them to make wires. Um, you can roll them. You see down in the, do I have a cursor? Yeah, uh, down in the bottom left, you can actually take a little strip of metal and, and run it through several rollers and roll it into a tube and weld it. So I, I, I'm not proposing 3D printers for things that could be made better elsewhere in, in other ways. Um, by the way, to build that hillside settlement you see there, um, we, <laughs> Uh, esti we estimated we'd need many tons of, of plastic. Um, th there are the, uh, uh, the processes. Um, you, you manufacture oxygen, methane, and then work up to, um, to plastics from that. So we're assuming that you have this ability already 
to, you know, that you're going to have a, a space settlement that can already manufacture the gases, the fuels, and the raw materials for plastics. Um, you start compressing the CO2. Uh, you can liquefy other gases out of it. Um, and down near the bottom, you see uh, uh, producing methane, CH4. Um, electrolysis will make the hydrogen. Um, so the, for that previous uh, uh, base you saw, the, the raw plastic materials were polyethylene to bond the fiberglass, I, I'm sorry, polyethylene for, for common use indoors, like making a milk bottle or, you know, or, or kitchen utensils. Polyester to bond the fiberglass and epoxy when you needed maximum strength. Uh, it's a lot of it. Uh, we're talking um, 100 tons of 100 tons of fiberglass and polyester, 40 tons of polyethylene, and five tons of epoxy. This is to support 12 people indefinitely. Okay. Um, there are the raw materials. Um, here's some of the steps that you go through. Uh, this is all in a paper online. I, I want to get to the pretty pictures. Um, there's a machine for extruding, for taking polyethylene chips and extruding um, uh, um, you, know, you know, a strip of polyethylene. And I have um, spec sheets for some of the machines that made the parts in, the, um, in those boxes. If anybody wants to come back to the slide, we can, and that slide too. Okay, so that's the proposal. Let's get some people interested in doing this and do it. And now for the pretty pictures. Um, Interesting. Ah, all these, uh, Okay, um, just some of the things that you'd want to make out of some sort of custom manufacturing. Uh, this is by Carter Emart um, in the Case for Mars number two conference. And just look at the number of little, you know, chairs and utensils and water faucets that all have to be manufactured somehow. Um, uh, uh, initially, they'd be brought from Earth, but, you'd, but you want to bring the minimum number from Earth. Oh, I, I should say um, uh, soy o soybean oil and corn oil are also possible starting, um, starting materials. Um, here's a, a bamboo and plastic bench that we designed uh, wh where, you, where you'd cut out sheets to make the ends of the, uh, of the bench. Um, another version of it, actually the original version of it. Imagine those end pieces were glued together. Um, some things you just make out of, out of brick or whatever. It, it's probably cheaper. Uh, th this is similar to the bamboo bench. Um, and sometimes you just need steel <laughs> um, or, <laughs> or electric wire. Um, okay, here's a guy um, molding a spoon. You could have a, a, a 3D printer manufacture a mold or, or a, you know, an object that would then be made of mold. And here's the result of a spoon. So. so so, so, so you can either, um, you can print plastic, you can mold metal, and in some cases you can mold metal, um, metal filings and, and get uh, kind of a sintered metal. Um, another, uh, uh, another example of something that you might want to make, a tool you might want to make. Uh, by the way, the, there are also laser jet cutters that can cut cloth uh, with minimal human effort it's for making clothing. Uh, there's a bicycle made that could be made with automated equipment. Here's another version of a bicycle. Okay. Um, I arranged all these windows to be just the right size and they got shrunk on me. Okay, la uh, let's do laser jet cutters. Wait, it, um, laser jet cutters um, have a laser that cuts a thin sheet of material. Well, actually, it can be a fairly thick sheet of material, and normally it's flat material, but here's an example where it can cut in three dimensions. Um, a commercial laser jet cutter, notice the belt that can feed um, the raw material in continuously and the protective cover. 
Uh, here's a, sort of a homemade version of a laser jet cutter. Uh, you'd have a, um, a platform that moves back and forth and either the material moves the other direction or the laser moves. Um, an example of what you might cut out with either a laser jet cutter or a water jet cutter. Here's another thing you could make. Um, I think this was made with a laser jet cutter, I'm not sure. Um, and uh, you can make very tiny objects. And it, so, so this is the size of two keys on a keyboard. It's a, it's a little model of a dinosaur made from very thin wood, I believe, uh, and cutting cloth. Uh, just a pretty picture to end that. And we're back to the beginning. Okay. Uh, see what this one. Um, I want to mention powder. Um, one of the boxes that has kind of the whitish parts is made from powder. Um, it's a combination of plaster and cornstarch. The company is called Z Corp that made those. They're in Burlington, Massachusetts. Here's a little model of two space suits and a, and a um, docking ports for the, for the space suits that was made from literally plaster dust, uh, but automated. And uh, there's a model of our hillside settlement, and that model is up here. look at it afterwards. Again, made from plaster. This one was hand painted. Um, I should mention color. Um, most of these processes cannot make parts in color, but the plaster one can do color. Uh, it basically squirts colored water to solidify plaster dust. Oh, and um, notice the void inside the hill. Th this hill was hollowed out, not to make a big settlement, but um, to save on plaster. And this is an issue, you, uh, many of these machines cannot make an overhanging part. Uh, uh, that is, you can't have, say, a post going up and then a flat table. You'd have to build a temporary support for it. Um, some of the machines can do that, some can't. Okay, this is a fun project. Um, the machine called Parent manufactured the parts for the machine called Child. This is exactly what we'd want to do on Mars. You send a couple small machines and manufacture parts for more machines and for larger machines. So, uh, this is called the RepRack project, um, which um, is, is a project to, to, to make most of the parts for a 3D printer on a 3D printer. So, where's my cursor? Uh, here's a close-up of it. That green stage moves toward and away from the camera, and then the whole bar moves the other direction. Um, and down here is a gun that extrudes melted plastic. I think this white thing here is a, uh, a ribbon of plastic that comes in and feeds it. Uh, and basically, um, anybody with mechanical you know, inclination can make one of these. Uh, here's some of the parts made on one machine for making a machine. Um, it's getting a lot of publicity. <laughs> it hit um, I Can Has Cheeseburger. Um, uh, uh, this is kind of a, a fairly common design. There's the, um, uh, the, there's the, the, the extruder gun. It moves back and forth on this and, the, and then that direction as well. And then the platform moves down. Um, you can print circuit boards. Um, the, instead of extruding plastic, you can extrude uh, something that conducts electricity or something that etches away a layer of copper. Um, another example of parts um, for one of these machines. Uh, you can make uh, rovers, um, which would be nice on Mars. It would be nice to have a manufacturing plant on Mars. They just churned out you know, an extra rover every month and send it out over the horizon to explore. Um, that is an interesting picture. Ah. Uh, that is very interesting. Because they're up here. Okay, uh, that might be a good place to stop. Let's see if I can get them from the other direction. Nope. Okay. Um, I want to say that um, we're borrowing uh, one of those, those little MakerBot machines. We'll have it in the exhibit room tomorrow and hopefully Sunday morning as well. Um, I think that's it. So.
There's my contact information. Um, and